Hello, Arranging One. It's Kevin. Um, I just wanted to give you some more information about this week's assignment on the Blues Project. Right now, we're looking at the uh, online class assignments, and as you can see, there's another video that's on the website. If you haven't seen that, you should watch that. Um, and for this week, you should complete part one of the Midterm Blues Project. There is a 42-page PDF on OL that shows you lots of good information here. Uh, also, you're going to be reading, this is about the uh, keyboard, I believe, the, the keyboard, our next uh, instrument. Okay, uh, and if you look at the detailed uh, project uh, page, this is where we are at this point. Do week six, choose a key for your blues, enter chord symbols, compose blues lyrics, at least two verses in AAV form, plan entire arrangement with a technical outline document, enter at least half of your bass and drum part into finale. Okay, uh, so let's go over to the class webpage and just re, re acquaint ourselves with what's on the class web, web page. Um, here's the assignment I was just showing you. Here's a technical outline template where you can plan your uh, project. Here is the finale template. That's been updated now. I put some new things on that uh, as you can see at this, uh, at this stage. And um, this is the Big Blues handout with all the information that you will need. This is the sample project audio file. Okay, The um, sample project is in the blues handout and actually I'm going to hide this. Uh, whoops, there we go. Um, all right, here is a drum patterns uh, page with blues shuffle patterns on it. And uh, so, you know, this is a lot of different ones. If you want to play through this, you can hear what they sound like. That's more of a stop time-ish thing. Uh, here's another groove. All right, so that'll give you an idea of some uh, possible patterns to use. Those can also be found in the big PDF document that I referred to earlier. Okay, so let's say you've downloaded your um, template. Oh, by the way, you should watch, you should listen to the whole sample project, which is called Baby, Why You Go to School. And this is, um, this was done by my colleague Dave Zoffer. And uh, you should listen to the whole thing. So you should listen to the whole thing and get some ideas for your project here as well. Okay, uh, what I wanted to do today was um, talk to you about getting some stuff into your project. So once you've downloaded the template, you'll get something like this, except it won't be filled in here. And I just wanted to go over how to, um, how to write some drum parts here. So let's see. First thing I want to make sure you did is um, you, if you're now a lot of you might be entering music with a MIDI keyboard with speedy entry, and that's a good idea. Uh, if you don't have that, and if you're only if you only have your laptop, you can still do it through a simple entry, which is what I'm going to show you today. Make sure your simple entry options are blank here, and then under keyboard shortcuts, you want to go to the laptop shortcut table. And this will make it easy for, for uh, working on a laptop. Also, in system preferences, you want to make sure that you have, under keyboard, you want to have use these function keys as standard function keys. Okay, so uh, now, uh, see what I have here? I have two bars of a groove. I have uh, slash notation and continue simile. I have um, kicks over time here that are not working entirely perfectly because the, the layer two is not playing back and I've done a little research and I can't figure that out quickly so we'll have to figure that out at another time but um, I'm going to show you how to do uh, kicks over time and uh, a few things we're going to also talk about chord symbols and um, maybe some parentheses and stuff for altering your drum part a little bit all right, so let's uh, clear this out. And as I, and we can start from scratch and try to do it again here. 
so I just went to, uh, selected everything and hit delete and that got rid of all my uh, information, all my drum kit information. Alright, so um, just to reiterate that you do need chord symbols for your entire project and it's a good thing to do it in advance. Um, for example, you could make sure you choose your key uh, properly. Let's say you're doing your blues in D. All right. And then, so the form would be, of course, um, 5, 7, A7, G7, and uh, D7 for two bars. And then our form would be, okay, so it would be D7 for four bars. And then over here, bar 5, G7 for two. D7. So I'm clicking in the measure that I want to put them in. You can also tab. So, uh, and now I'm going to go to A7, G7, so tab, and then D7. Okay, so that's going to be our pattern for the whole uh, thing. Now, if I select these measures, I can just uh, copy all my chord symbols for the rest of the piece. So, if I can make this much smaller, I'm going to make this much smaller for a second here. Um, and I could, you know, go con Command E, and I could make it into a um, scroll view. So now I can take these 12 bars and just copy the um, the chord symbols uh, again and again. So um, I'm going to just go Command C is another way, right? And then I just go to my first bar of my next 12 bars, and I hit that. And then my first bar of my next 12 bars, hit that. And now I've got all my um, chord symbols in for the piece relatively quickly. Uh, once you've got those all in, you can click out here to the left and you can select all these and you can put your chord symbols in your keys and your bass. And um, everybody should have chord symbols eventually. And you will see that you, know, you may want to change them around um, a little bit depending on what your keyboard part is. But this is uh, a good idea to maybe just put them in at this point all together. Okay, so chord symbols, use the chord tool. Make sure you use the chord tool, not the text tool or anything. The chord tool is very important for that. All right, so let's go back to um, page view here. I don't have to do that. Maybe I'll just make this. So uh, you can work in scroll view or page view. I'll just work in um, scroll view now here. So uh, this is measure Five, so right here is where we're going to start. Okay, so we're going to do a simple entry here, and we're going to start with layer one over here in the corner. Now, layer two is where you're going to be putting the feet. Layer one is where you're going to be putting the hands. So uh, we're going to start in layer one over here. And let's do, um, we're going to take our left hand, and we're going to select uh, the particular, we're going to arrow over to the left, and now let's select the particular uh, no value that we want. Okay, and here's ride symbol. I'm going to do ride. I'm going to do eight ride symbols here. Okay, and uh, now I'm going to, of course, put my snare on uh, the two and four. So as you can see, uh, if I kind of change my, if I hover over the snare, whoops, that's a low tom. That's not good. Uh, I'm going to put my snare in here. Whoops, there, on two. And four. Okay, and now I've got my uh, groove, and then I'm going to put my Charleston rhythm in layer two. So layer two. Uh, and by the way, uh, all these rhythms are on the PDF, right? Here's the the PDF, and um, all these rhythms that you might use for the snare are here, and snare and toms, and then um, there's symbol um, patterns here, interesting things. We'll do the Charleston in the in the kick drum right here. All right, so um, now I'm in layer two, and I'm going to choose uh, with my left hand. I'm going to choose five, which is a quarter note. Whoops, on the kick drum, did I make it? No, I don't want ride symbol. I want kick drum. Enter. I don't know why that shifted off to the side. Hmm. Uh, all right, I'm not going to stop to figure that out right now. But now I'm going to hit, so, uh, there we go. Now I'm going to hit, uh, is that selected? Layer two. Okay, so now I'm going to hit four, which is an eighth note. I'm going to enter again, 
and put a rest though. All right, and then I'm gonna put another eighth note on the kick drum. And now I'm gonna type with my left hand six, that's a half note, I'll hit enter and then I'll put a rest, R. So type R just right after. So it's now bump, 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 bump. Now you only have to get the groove right, you know, a couple once or twice. I, again, I don't know why this is positioned incorrectly, but um, uh, I'll, I don't wanna to stop to figure that out right now. All right, so now I'm gonna put in a, um, I'm going to put in, so I'm going to copy these. So see my arrow tool, that's my copy feature. So I'm going to select these, go over here and put in at least four measures of the groove, okay? Now um, let's do four more here. So what is, what is the main idea here? Layer one, layer two. Um, I'm trying to do this all on the laptop because I know you guys will, might be doing it on the laptop. Uh, I always use speedy entry because I believe it's, uh, it is much easier for me to do it. But Okay, now um, let's say we want the groove to continue. We can put in a staff style and that's right here if you can see the little uh, staff tool. So now in measure eight and nine, for example, this would be a perfect time to use slash notation. Notice my groove is still there and uh, but it is hidden and we've got some slashes here so uh, it'll play back just fine here's two more let's practice it again i'm going to click with the, my uh with my cleft with this little staff tool selected i'm going to click and then shift click the next measure and then type s for slash notation all right now um you might, this is kind of advanced, but if anybody wants to use kicks over time, there's kind of a way to, to do that. And that is to um, apply this staff style, which is, uh, so apply staff styles to score and parts. And kicks over time, this is something I created just now for you guys. Um, so what it does is it hides this, but it lets you put things in other layers still. The only problem is we have stuff in layer two so I am just gonna go and hide this stuff in layer two by clicking speedy entry and typing O and arrowing to the right, O, 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 and I'm hiding all those things. So it won't show up on, on a print or anything, but uh, it's still kind of there in the groove. Um, all right, now we can go into layer three and I've programmed layer three to be your kicks over time. So you can go to uh, simple note entry, for example, and we can type with our left hand six for the um, note value, which is a half note. Okay, and I'm just gonna enter anything. Whoops. We wanna be down here. Actually, the first, the first note you put in, it's often best to um, just put it in manually here. I'm gonna go ride, and then I'm gonna go R, so it's a half rest, and then I'm gonna hit, um, uh, five and then R. Try again here. Oh, I put bass drum in here just so that we could have a nice kick over time. All right, and then And then I'll hit R, and then, whoops. And then I'm gonna put this kick drum up here to be a kick over time, say. It's gonna look like it's uh, a kick over time and it will sound like a, a bass drum. So um, now I've got that in there and that'll be my kicks over time, how you do that. So you can um, hide the notes in layer two and then in layer three you can enter uh, some rests and then wherever you want the kick over time you put that in there Okay, before you do any of this stuff though, you should be planning your um, Arrangement and that is in this document right here where you have a technical outline And so you're gonna fill this out and this is the a big part of arranging is kind of planning it out in advance and knowing what you're gonna do You don't just start writing you kind of plan out each uh, event. What kind of a groove am I going to use at this moment in the cymbals, in the snare, in the, in the bass drum for the intro? You know, what am I going to do in the bass? What am I going to do in the organ? So you have to fill this all out. So that's due for uh, next time as well. 
Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, sorry, I wanna go back to this for a second. Uh, so, um, you're gonna be entering half of your bass and drum parts in finale. And so again, all this stuff is due next time. So there is a spot to compose blues lyrics in the handout. You could print that one page, the PDF handout. You could print that one page and just type into it um, or somehow create your, your AAB blues in some other way. But All right, so that's just basically what I wanted to touch base with you guys uh, before next class about. And so I hope you got something out of that. Uh, talk to you next class.